I'm Grace at Vanderpool. My background's nursing. I've been nursing for almost 40 years. Soon ready to retire. Um, not really. Uh, I don't. I, I might retire from the NHS, but I won't retire. You know, I can't <laughs> see myself retiring at all. Um, and uh, yeah, so I started at the very lowest level of nursing. Um, I was born here in the United Kingdom in Slough. My parents came over in the 50s. My dad studied law and he never practiced law one day of his life. And I just want you to think about that for a minute. Why do you think that back in the 50s, he was not allowed to practice law, even though he studied it? Glass ceilings and glass boxes. Pardon? Glass ceilings and glass boxes. Yeah, yeah, snow-capped society that we lived in. Um, yeah, he's a black man. And, you know, it was unheard of for a black man to actually be, a, you know, a solicitor, a lawyer back in those days. But he didn't... Um, he didn't stop there. He actually did all sorts of odd jobs, you know, carpentry, joinery, all sorts of handy jobs to keep the family and to keep, you know. And, but he, had, he made sure that we got an education. Um, and he insisted that it doesn't matter. He had the knowledge, he had the skill, he had the ability, but he didn't have the opportunity. But he had that opportunity to up through us. So the six of us in my family, I'm number two, um, and there's four, five girls, one boy. Um, and we've all done well professionally. But having said that, uh, coming back to me, I went back to, we, they, well, my parents took us back to the Caribbean, a tiny island called Anguilla. And it, there's a series on BBC One at the moment, around eight o'clock on a Monday, and Harper's watched it. Lots of people are watching it. It's got the best beaches in the world, and you'll probably challenge me on that one, say <laughs> your islands have got the best beaches. But honestly, it's got the best beaches in the world. <clears throat> Um, it's a British colony um, and it's just being developed and, and, and lots of people are finding it. So when I go on holiday and I see Beyonce walking down the beach, I go, oh, there's Beyonce. And they go, oh, she's here all the time. You know, or there's Denzel Washington and I'm like, oh, there's Denzel. And they're like, oh, they just come here all the time. Because it's one of those um, islands that's got really huge um, high-end hotels where the wealthy go and seek, have little hideouts and things like that. But we don't want them to spoil it. Uh, so, so yeah, I grew up in the Caribbean in, on that island called Anguilla. I went to have my basic education there, um, sort of um, junior school, middle school, high school, A-levels. And the A-levels we did back then was the Cambridge board exams. Tough, tough, tough um, uh, A-levels. But anyway, got through them, came back to England, went into nursing. So I applied for nursing, not realising the difference between the levels. Um, anyway, I applied to the Whittington Hospital, I got in, it was the first hospital I applied to, got in, and when I started, I realised I was on the two-year course, not the three-year course then, so the enrolled nursing course and not the SRN, that's what it was then. So anyway, I went to the um, director of nursing and I said, this isn't what I wanted, and she said, don't worry, pet, you know, do this and then you can do an extra year. So I thought, okay, fine, that sounds reasonable, I'm here, the, you know, I was expecting to be taken on in the same hospital, but I wasn't. So it took me 10 years, you know, before I could do the RGN. So um, I, I, in that 10 years, I got married, had my daughter, um, worked in different places, travelled to the US, worked in the US for a while, then came back to the UK and then, um, yeah, started to work in outpatients because I needed to have normal working hours. My daughter, my husband was working shift at the time. So anyway, um, a professor called Eva Kona, she wasn't a professor then, she was a consultant. I did the diabetic clinic and she said, come and work for me, I will make you a specialist. But she was such a dragon, really. You know, she was a, her heart was there, but she was, you know, she had come from Germany. She, was, she came over when they had all those problems back there. Uh, she'd lost family in the Holocaust and things like that. She was a, she was a bit of a bitter woman, really. Uh, but she was a nurse and then studied to become a doctor and became a professor of diabetes and ophthalmology. So um, she saw the potential in me. And one of the things I'll say to you is that you only need to find one person in life who, who really likes you, who cherishes you, who values you. Stick with that person. That person could be your mentor. She encouraged me, so I, I got into diabetes. Um, I did a lot of research. I did clinical, uh, I did a, a clinic as well. I had a clinical caseload. And every, every um, Tuesday we would have an MDT where we would talk about our patients. And 
And I learned lots of skills there. I learned how to take blood. I learned how to give fluids in angiograms. I learned how to do research. I learned how to write papers. Um, but I didn't just, it wasn't just given to me on a plate. You know, I had issues with doing blood with people with difficult veins. And I'd call her up and I'd say, I can't get this vein. And she'd say, pull your finger out, hang the phone up on me. And those days I wanted to walk away and, and, and think no. But I thought, you know what, she is pushing me here. She's stretching me. So anyway, eventually I became the best in that department on taking blood, difficult veins, doing fluid fluids in angiograms and stuff like that. So, you know, it's not an easy walk in the park, but if you stick with it, you know, you can achieve it. So anyway, I got to the, um, we had the uh, Whitley scale then, we didn't have a gender for change. So I went from a C grade enrolled nurse to an F grade enrolled nurse in diabetes. And that was unheard of, that was at Hammersmith Hospital. So eventually um, she came to me and I was looking at doing my one year conversion and she said, go and do your course, I'll keep your job for you. So that was a blessing in disguise. So she employed a, an agency nurse for a year while I did my conversion course at Hammersmith and I passed that with distinction. I say this because every job I go to they always say to me I've never come across a nurse with a distinction and I always say you're meeting one now. <laughs> uh, and I remember when I did my exam I, I went home and I started studying again because I was convinced that I'd failed. And everybody, I mean, you know when you do the post-mortem and you talk about what you put on your paper and things like that, what I put they didn't put, and I'm thinking, well, they've all got it. Either they've got it wrong, and I've got it right, or the other way around. Anyway, um, when I got my results, I came up with a distinction. So I went back to my unit, to the diabetic unit, and she, she had a massive party for me. She said, I always knew you were clever, <laughs> you know. And all that sort of um, support and encouragement sort of gave, gave me the impetus to keep going forward and forward. And as a reward, she took me around Europe with her when she was given a presentation in the European Diabetes um, Society. She took me with her, driving around Europe, <laughs> um, you know, and as, as a thank you, and, and you know, and a, I suppose a pat on the back, really, for uh, coming back and doing the work that I'd done. And she always felt I was the hardest working person. And, and you know, as people of colour, we, we have to go that extra mile. You've got to be head and shoulders above your, your other colleagues. They'll question about it. You've got to push the boat out. You've got to be strong. You've got to be fierce almost. You've got to believe in yourself. And doing courses like this is what will help you to move forward. So anyway, you know, when I got back to the job, to the, the department, um, she promoted me to a G grade. So I got promotion then. And I hung around for another few years and I got an H grade. And then I hung around for another few years and there was going to be the lead nurse role that came up, um, was going to come up and they kept encouraging me to stay, but it didn't come up. So I bit the bullet and I left and I went to Slough. And that was um, Windsor first and then Slough. And that's when my career really took off. You know, I was working with the diabetes team in Windsor. This job came up in Slough for an I grade nurse. And I, I was born in Slough, I had some kind of pull to that area. I knew that diabetes was highly prevalent there and it was our people that were suffering because I could see them coming into the department, blinded eyes, amputations, you know, heart, heart attacks, strokes. These, this is the consequence of diabetes. And I thought, I've got to do something. So anyway, they offered me the job and I turned it down. I thought, I was interviewed in a horrible room next to mental health where the drug addicts were coming in to collect their sharp bins, the place stunk of alcohol and we, and I thought, I'm not coming here to work. So anyway, I turned the job down and they called me up and said, why? why? I said, I'm not feeling it, you know, I, 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 this, I don't want to work in this environment. And they said, come anyway, we'll sort things out for you. So anyway, I came and I was there for about 18 months and I had an idea. And we had a chief executive who actually had an open door policy. So if you walk past his office, you could just knock on the door and go in. So I went in and I had a few ideas jotted down on a piece of paper. And it was around redesigning the diabetes service, uh, making sure that all the people with diabetes were on registers, that way we get care and all that sort of thing. And he literally jumped on the idea. So what I did then was I actually did, um, they have a, a, a festival called the Mela. Have you heard of a Mela? Yeah, and basically it's an Asian festival. It was held in the park, supported by the council. And I just had a stand, you know, one table. 
and um, I just asked people, I said, what, what are your thoughts about diabetes? What would you like to see? So whatever they were telling me all resonated with me because that's what I had put on my paper. So I wrote up, I did, I did an evaluation, wrote it up, and, and that went into primary care report. So eventually the, there's a company called Dr. Foster, and if you ever quote Dr. Foster, they do a lot of research for the NHS. Um, and he read the report, met with my chief executive, unbeknown to me, they had dinner and talked about what I'd done. So eventually I got this call from the chief executive, said, can I come to his office now? And I'm like, mm, what have I done? Uh, that's what I was thinking. But actually, they wanted me to work on a project. And they said, there's a project here, Grace, but what, what, what is it? What are you feeling? What are you wanting to get out of this? And I said, I want something that takes action on diabetes. So we called it Action Diabetes. And um, that they gave us some research help. I had a PA support. Uh, it was the best job, I must tell you, the best job. I had all the support I needed. And eventually, over two years, we worked up the project and um, it went viral across the whole country. Um, I got asked to go to the Department of Health to give a talk about it and I, I, I'm talking to them like I'm talking to you now. And I said, it was just an idea, I'm just doing my job, that's what I'm thinking. But they saw the huge potential. So eventually I got asked to go to speak to every strategic health authority um, about this project and how we could actually, you know, get patients with diabetes to go into registers, get them annual reviewed, get them treated and structured education and all that sort of thing. And um, then I got a call to say, um, the House of Lords would like you to come and give a presentation. Well, I can tell you that was the most nerve-wracking presentation I ever gave. Um, on the way there, I actually called my husband about 15 times saying, I can't do this, I can't do this. And he just said to me, look, Grace, what, what do you know? I said, I guess I know something about diabetes. And, and he said to me, what do they know? I said, I guess they know about politics. That, at that moment, I got the inspiration, I got the idea that when I walk into that room, I'm going to ask them, what do you, how many of you know what diabetes is? There's 150 lords and ladies, all very top, posh um, speaking people, and only one person put their name up, and that was a, a, a lady who had um, been a nurse in her former career, who's the only one. And that actually got me into gear, and then thought, right, I'm gonna tell you now, what diabetes is. So anyway, I did that presentation, and that took Slough, the chief executive, the director of public health, to the top of the, the map. And we've got invitations all over the world. You know, we got an invitation to Australia, but I couldn't go because my granddad had passed away. But America, you know, the Caribbean, and, and you know, all over. So telling you about that project was just following your mind, following what's in you. Do what you want to do, be authentic. Be yourself. Don't be like somebody else. I'm not the same as anybody else. My DNA isn't the same as any of yours. You're unique. And we all come with a something special that needs to come out. And you've got to find that something special. So I found my niche within diabetes. Um, I'm the only African-Caribbean diabetes nurse consultant in the country. The only one. So I'm grooming people to take over, you know, succession planning. Because, you know what, if I move from this seat today... <laughs> If I move from this seat today, then there will be no one, you know, to represent our population. And the reason why I say that we need to have someone there, diabetes is more prevalent in our population than it is the Asian population, than it is in the Caucasian population. And we need to have um, leaders. We need to have, you know, people who can fly the flag for us. So as a result of doing all of this, I'm, I sit on various committees. I, I chair the, the, the RCN Diabetes Forum. I chair the Diabetes Nurse Consultant Group nationally. I sit on think tanks for the government, um, all parliamentary groups. I've set up the African Caribbean Diabetes Foundation because if we don't do that, then how do we learn about our diets, different diets, African, Caribbean, different um, sorts of uh, variations of our diet. You know, if you go to Anguilla, we cook rice and peas with, with um, olive oil and, and um, you know, you go to Jamaica, they add uh, coconut cream. You go to some of the other islands, they cook with red salted butter. It's the same rice and peas, but it's just cooked slightly different. But that has an impact on health, doesn't it? You know, red salted butter's lovely, but, you know, it, it plays havoc with your blood pressure.
okay? Um, you know, uh, coconut cream is really nice, but will play havoc with your cholesterol. Olive oil is good, but again, if you have too much of it, you, you know, you just gain weight. It's just, it's an oil, it's a fat. So um, my, my legacy, I believe, will be is that I've set up this African Caribbean Foundation and that, my, that I have trained and developed nurses from my ethnic background to actually lead in this area because diabetes is, is, is exploding across the world. You know, it's one of those conditions that, you know, you're going to know every other person with it at the moment is going through the roof. So, um, in sitting on all these different committees, it exposes me to a lots of um, different skills, you know. I didn't get taught how to chair meetings, I didn't get taught how to market my service as a nurse. We don't get those, those training, but that's what I need, those are the skills I need to do my job. You know, I have to, you know, go out there to GPs and sell my services to them because, you know what, Virgin, who is uh, got all the business acumen, have got all the know-how about business, is going to compete with me. And, you know, and if they can be slick with their business skills and their style, and I just have my clinical hat on, and, you know, it's all about, you know, getting the HbA1c down, getting the weight down, but not about cost-effectiveness, then I won't win that service. So what I'm saying is that even in, even in your day-to-day -day job, and you're doing your nursing or whatever area you work in, you need to look outside. Look outside uh, for skills that you will need, you know, that will take you, uh, uh, you know, higher and take you head and shoulders above your colleagues, okay? If you aspire to be a nurse consultant, get nurse consultant job descriptions and specifications and actually look at all what they're requesting. And if you aspire to that, make sure you have your masters. It doesn't have to be in diabetes. Make sure you've got leadership skills. Make sure you understand commissioning. You know, these are the sort of things. If a nurse consultant, there's four, five key domains. So it's research, expert practice, consultation, um, leadership, and education. So those five areas, those five key domains, I have to be strong in. So whatever area you're wanting to go into, you know, if you want to become a chief executive, look for what the, you know, that you can find it on HSJ or on just on the internet. Look at the specification of what, re what the requirements are to be that. And then what I would advise you to do, and I, I'm sorry my iron key doesn't work on Harple's laptop, but I have something that I, ha I call a vision board, okay? Get yourself a vision board. If you want to drive the top class Mercedes, get a picture of it, put it on your vision board. If you want to do your MBA, which I'm doing at the moment, um, go out and go look at an MBA and look at what that can actually add to your career. An MBA for me I will help me understand the strategic management of healthcare, okay, the finances of healthcare. Um, I'd ha also have to do some sort of project around, you know, change management, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but as a nurse, you know, um, my training didn't equip me for this role at all. But I always remember when I converted from an e enrolled nurse to staff nurse, I just wanted to be a staff nurse then. Um, our tutor said to us, we are training you for the leaders of the future. And I didn't know what that meant then. Because all I wanted to be was a registered nurse, you know. So you can um, get inspiration from lots of different people. If you want to be... A whatever, chief executive or accountant or whatever, get to know accountants, get to know chief executives. So when I left Slough and I went to CLCH, uh, it was Hammersmith and Fulham then, the chief executive gave me a reference and that was the talk of the organisation for a long, long time because it's unheard of for a chief executive to give a, a clinical reference, you know, to someone, but I was one of the first. So, um, you know, and along the way, you know, for that project I did in Slough, I was awarded Nurse of the Year, 2006, and six months later I got an MBE. So, and, you know, all for doing my job as I saw it. But that was, you know, I, I was perceived to be an outstanding leader. I got nominated by patients, you know, for various awards, by, by chief executives for various awards, for um, the, one of the 50th most influential leaders in the NHS at the moment. Um, so all the all, the, all BME, well, I'm one of the first 50. So you can be the same and say, you know, I, I don't feel that I have anything more special than you guys, you know? 
I just feel that I was being me and being authentic. I'm passionate, as you can hear. I love what I do and I give 150%. And I think that's what takes you over the edge. If you just do what's in your job description, you'll never grow. I outgrew my job description within six months because you know what? I was doing a lot of it in my previous role and I just took it further and I'm constantly striving. You know, I'm doing a big research project now on lipo hypertrophy and that's in, you know, injection technique and lipos under the skin. Um, and I'm probably one of the first nurse consultants to actually be the principal investigator for a massive research project. Okay. Just because I shared my passion with a company, I said, I'm really concerned about this. Why don't we do something about it? And they ran with it. So don't keep it all in here. You know, they say the most ideas are in the graveyard. We don't want that. We want them out there. You know, I have a few quotes for you as well. So if you want to be, see the change in the world, you be that change. So I don't just do stuff within health. I do um, often see the African Caribbean Diabetes Foundation. I've just been appointed as community rep for our island in the UK, so I go to the Foreign Office and I have to know about politics. And I have, didn't think I had the slightest interest in politics, but actually, if I want to make our community better, I have to learn it. So I'm, I'm rubbing shoulders with MPs and la ladies and lords, and do you know what? They're really interested to know what you have to say. We see them up there, but they're not, they're just human beings just like you and me, you know? And if you were to meet Richard Branson in the lift now, what question would you ask him? Like you like your job? <laughs> Do you know Richard Branson is um, dyslexic? Yes. He's dyslexic. He cannot, he cannot do a presentation, you know, like we would do normal presentations. He will do, he talk to you like I'm talking to you. He's an ideas man, but he gets the people around him to do the jobs, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so who said be the change that you want to see in the world? Gandhi. Gandhi, yeah, Gandhi. Quotes up, get as many quotes as you can. I love quotes, they inspire me. They get me out of bed, you know? There's few in this Miracle Morning book, um, which I want to share with you. Where you are is a result of who you were. So where you are today was a decision you took how many years ago? But where you go depends entirely on who you choose to be. So you've got to choose to be. You know, pe we, people of colour think that, um, you know, some of us think that, you know, we've been done to all the time. Okay, it's my manager, it's the chief executive, it's the NHS, it's this. It's not, you know. Always think can do. If you take the T of can't, what does it say? And what was Obama's slogan? Yes, yes, we, yes can. we can. Yeah. You can always find a way, there's always a way. You may not, there's several ways to skin a cat, several ways to eat an elephant, isn't it? One bite at a time, yeah? So you can, uh, you know, get a mentor. I would strictly um, sort of encourage you to get a mentor. Harper used to mentor me. Yeah, and even when Pat Harper was, uh, were you a band six or something then? So she was a band six, I was an eighth B. So you can learn, you know, from, from, from people who um, I learned from my daughter, I gave birth to her, and she and she's teaching me now. And she's teaching me now. You know, I remember my grandmother had diabetes, and she. Um, I used to try and try to educate her on how to eat healthily, and she'd say to me, "I don't care what you say. I'm the reason why you're here." So you know that puts me firmly in my place. But what I'm saying is that you know you can you can learn from everyone. You know. Find someone you aspire to be like, uh, or not aspire to be like in terms of who they are, but if you aspire to the role that they do, or you aspire to the way they speak or dress, you know, speak to them. Ask questions. You know, if you ask the right questions, you will soar. That's another one of Harpel's terms, soaring. You know, you will soar. So it, it's, it's up to you. If it's gonna be, it's up to you, isn't it? It's gonna be, it's up to me. Um, and, you know, when I sit amongst my nurse consultant colleagues, and I'm the only one, actually, even just going through a, a lot of my training courses, leadership, I did, I did um, a leadership course with Ashridge Business School and, and CLCH at the time. They were talent spotting. So, you know, take the opportunity. It's hard work because I had to do my day job as well. You know, I had to see my patients. I had to write my letters. I had to communicate with everybody. But take the opportunities. This, this, 
this this is the platform because once you realize that you can achieve you know um, anything you want to achieve in life once you get it nothing will stop you even if your manager says no you'll find a way around it mm -hmm. you know that's what I've done you know dip your toe in the water you know be uncomfortable stretch yourselves you know um, I speaking in the House of Lords that was like you know that was oh, I can do it there I can do it anywhere you know and when I say that to um, you know in, in, in sort of meetings or at university or whatever it is people say really that would cripple me you know but it, cri it almost crippled me but I had the support of my husband who would just kind of you know nudge me along all the way to 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 Westminster you know to get me there and once I got there develop strategies think about what's going to make you put you at ease because quite honestly you know they're only human beings they want to hear what you have got to say you know they want to hear what you've got to say just choose you know use your time Pack a punch, you know, as they say, you know, just be good at what you do, always, you know, and be, um, have integrity, that's what, be, be your word, if you say you're going to do something, do it, you know, this is where you get acknowledgement, when people say, if you want, you know, they say uh, in the workplace that if you want something done, give it to the busiest person, have you heard that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, and so, oh, they're, they're giving me too much to do, sometimes it's an opportunity, you know, to actually just showcase yourself. So, going back now to what I'm going to the future now for me, I had my appraisal with my manager, who happens to have two masters. One is a business uh, masters, and he said to me, "Well, what what about you, Grace? Because I was talking all about service, 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 and teams and money and all that stuff." And he said to me, "What about you?" And I said, "Well, this is what I'd like to do: finish my MBA." So he said, "Get on with it." So, and I'm thinking, oh, right, I've got to plan clinics, I've got to find the money, I've got to do all these things. But you know what? I went and I filled in that form and I sent it off and I have an interview with Brunel just on my doorstep to actually finish it. And that's been like the monkey on the shoulder. Grace, you've got to do this, you've got to finish it, you know? So I will, I will finish it. And I do say affirmations. Do you know what I mean when I say affirmations? <coughs> what sort of, what, what, what's, what's an affirmation? So yeah. So I want to achieve my MBA. I'm not saying that as an affirmation. I'm saying I have my MBA. I have Grace Evening Carty Vanceful have an MBA. Talk to yourself. It's not mad. <laughs> <laughs> it's not mad. Write them down. Have them. And, and then this this um pack you get here. There's the spiritual ones, there's lifestyle ones, finance ones, career ones, family and friends, you know, think about it. You think about putting your, your whole life, you know, you only have one life, live it to the full. Wow. You know, don't let anybody put you down, even if they say it, just ignore it, you know. I find that racism is there, you know, it's, we are who we are, and you know, and the world is waking up to the importance of diversity. You saw in the film there that lady, those ladies, and that clip mm. that um, Harpel showed. You know, just just go for it, and believe you can achieve it. So there's lots of people I I read uh, things. People like Tony Robbins. Do you know him? Yeah, Anthony Robbins, hugely inspirational. This guy too, um, Hal Elrod. He actually died in a car um, accident. You is really really touching to read his story. Um, died in a car accident and was resuscitated and brought back to life and then thought about how he would like to live his life, you know, because he could have been gone, you know. Uh, so now he's developed this miracle morning and it's, it's amazing. When I first, well, I couldn't put the book down, you know, it's really, Can really... I ask you, so what have you changed from your life? So, so what, what have you done from So what life? I've done is um, I, I do exactly what this gentleman does. Yes. Get up at five o'clock in the morning, I say my prayers, um, I, and I read my affirmation, I read 10 pages of anything, whatever I choose to read, uh, whether it's my Bible or a book like this, 10 pages every day. I then do 10 minutes of exercise, because you, you know, you can do it in 60 minutes or six minutes, a minute of each, as long as you keep doing it every single day. Um, and on Monday, I'm gonna actually start the program. It's a 30 day program. And it talks about, you know, um, to change anything in your life, you have to do it for 21 days. Well, this talks about doing it for 30 days. 
okay? And you write down, there's pages where you can actually write down exactly what you're going to change, all right? And then you just do it every single day. And that's the wheel of life which we have. Oh, you've got the wheel of life. You've got, you've got it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's quite, quite a, a really nice way to get you energised, to deal with the traffic, to deal with, you know, sort of um, screaming kids, whether it's on the bus or on the tube or, you know, whatever it is that gets your goat in the morning. This sets you up to actually rise above that and you can actually see your world differently. Um, I, I would strongly advise you to get your vision boards. Whatever you want for your life, just put it on that board. But pictures are really good, you know. Um, I don't know whether you like travel, uh, whether you want to drive the top range Mercedes, whether you want to be a chief executive, whatever it is, put it on your vision board. Put it where you can see it. Say your affirmations in front of that vision board. You will achieve it. Because I remember saying in my bedroom, and I can see it now in my mind's eye, I came out of the shower and I said, I want to be a nurse consultant. And I said, Grace Carty, Evelyn Carty Vanterpool is a nurse consultant. And I became a nurse consultant. You know, I'm the only one of us, the 20 in the country, that have moved from an 8B to an 8C, okay? The, all of them are either 8A or 8B. I'm the only one. <laughs> okay?